Joining me now is David Wasserman, House Editor of the Cook Political Report. All right. It is easy to say, Mr. Wasserman, that Paul Ryan's exit has to do with Republicans having no chance. At the same time, I spend a lot, I've spent a lot of time with Paul Ryan, and I know he hated the job itself. So both things can be true here, that he had no desire to keep doing this job, and, the, and he's reading the writing on the wall. I think that's right. I don't believe that Randy Bryce chased Paul Ryan uh, out of the House. I think Donald Trump chased Paul Ryan out of the House for the think, most part, yes. although the job sucks. But consider the, the chain of events here. February 19th, a court orders a really friendly map for Democrats in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. March 13th, Republicans lose a district that Trump won by 20 points. And That's then 18. April 11th, Paul Ryan retires. How does this keep getting worse for Republicans? Now, the reason it's not a perfect mirror image with 2010 when Democrats lost is that it was, a, it's, it was apparent uh, early on, given Trump's unpopularity, that the Republican majority was in deep trouble. And we've still got a lot of filing deadlines left right. in the states. Well, let's look at them. I'm going to put them up here. We've got from New York, big states, too, New York, Michigan, Florida. We had a new Florida retirement on the same day by the way, as uh, Paul Ryan, Dennis Ross, a district that should be fine, but you never know um, in, in Florida. Washington State, there's a couple of vulnerable Republicans potentially up there. Arizona, there's a lot of filing deadlines still left. I mean, could we see a dozen more retirements or no? I don't know about a dozen, but you could Stivers see... Stivers admitted to me the other day that yeah, there might be a couple more. He, he, he said less than 10, though. He believed it would be well, less if, than 10. Chuck, if you were a Republican member... Why would you want to run for re-election in this climate? I mean, not only is maybe to serve in Congress, not only are maybe you they like. I mean, I, I mean, yeah, I, there's some reasons too. Darn it, it's not all about being in the majority, is it? Yeah, but you're getting mobbed at your town halls. You're having to answer for every tweet that Trump sends. And by the way, I don't think Donald Trump cares whether Republicans lose their majority. I think he cares first and foremost about protecting himself, mm -hmm. and that's a big problem for Republicans who need to get the Trump base out to vote. Some House members, mostly McCarthy um, supporters, and maybe it's McCarthy egging them on, say, hey, we want to know the new team in advance. I thought it was interesting today that Paul Ryan decided to basically endorse McCarthy, but be defiant. I'm not leaving. Is that going to mollify, you think, um, the House Republicans? I don't think Republicans really want a war uh, for leadership during the election season. So what Ryan is trying to do is, is exit as uh, exit with as, as much certainty as he can leave his party. Right. But look, we currently rate 53 Republican held seats in lean toss up or worse. We only rate six Democratic seats in lean toss up or worse. So, so that 53, that's double the number that Democrats need to pick well, up. Let's net it, 47. Let's right. net 47 here if you subtract. Yeah, that's basically twice what they need. Right. So the seats are in play, and every week we're seeing new polls that throw these races into more competitive categories. Mm -hmm. Have you seen, you know, it's interesting, is there any, what is the path for the Republicans to hold their majority? You know, we're, we're, there's all this doom and gloom, and we've got a new poll coming out next week, and, and one of our, our Republican polls is saying, you know, it's like, we're asking ourselves that question. So help me out here. What does that look like? What, how does things change that suddenly Republicans could hold the House? Well, I don't know that, that it's in their control except for making Democrats in these races unacceptable alternatives by going negative early. Which so is scorched something. earth. What you're saying right. is basically and that has to be By the way, the Ryan's exit hurts their ability to do that because the CLF, the Congressional Leadership Fund, Ryan's PAC, they're the ones who are counting on that money coming in to define those Democrats early. But look, Republicans have to get the generic congressional ballot, I believe, to about a six-point spread. That's kind of the threshold where they can plausibly hold on to the House, and that's tethered to Trump's approval rating. And the reason I think the gap may have narrowed in the mm -hmm. first three months of the year uh, and why Trump's approval rating ticked up to like 40 or 41 yeah. is that we've been talking about Comey, we've been talking about Michael Cohen, Putin, Russia, we've been talking about tariffs. That's that's actually not what swing voters in these districts They want to hear health care. They want to hear about health care. Yeah. They see the tax bill as a giveaway for the rich. Very quickly on the money front. Paul Ryan's retirement could mean, I've heard some, that a bunch of big donors and the, that basically Mitch McConnell is now going to court a bunch of big donors and say, hey, guys, the House is over. We need your money over here in Senate races. Is, is that could be the ultimate fallout here of the Ryan exit? That could well happen. And... I think one thing that's really overlooked in 2018 is just how historically little overlap we have between House and Senate right. battlefields, right? 
we could have an election in which Democrats pick up 40 House seats and lose four Senate seats, and it would be entirely consistent. And, and you could explain it. It right. would be plausible. Right. It's like, yes, the environment could actually make both happen. I don't think right. it's that wide in the Senate, but you're right. right. There could definitely be something like that. It's amazing. David Wasserman, it only gets more interesting. Thanks so much. Thanks for being here. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.